Yo, what's up design family? We just hit 100k subscribers, so my mum now can't kick me out of the house for not achieving anything anymore, so thank you so much for that. Now for real though, I appreciate you all. I'm going to be doing a giveaway or something of that nature in an upcoming video, so stay tuned and follow my socials to stay connected. So today we're looking at Photoshop's built-in gradient map tool. This is a great way to either colour grade your photography to make it look a little more artistic, or it can be used to completely transform your photo slash design and give it this trippy iridescent effect. You might recognise this from some of Brockhampton's cover art where they have kind of made it look like a heat sensor. Today I'll be covering the basics of how the tool works and down in the description you can actually find a link to my personal gradient maps pack which will help you to bring your photography to life real quick. That's 100% free so smack that like button. I'm also going to be using my new website to upload premium design packs for those who want to support me whilst leveling up their design assets even further. And don't worry, the content on my tutorials will always be free. The stuff on my website is basically going to be extras for people that want to like go that one step further, you know. Anyway, let's open up Photoshop and start designing. Here is a mood board that I created the other day whilst playing with the gradient map tool. I'll leave this in the description as well in case you guys want to check it out yourselves. I can already see that you guys are going to create some very cool imagery with this effect. So let's make a new canvas and drag our photography in. I'm going to duplicate it so you can see a visual demonstration of what it's going to look like with and without the gradient map. Step one is to click on the gradient map tool which is found here. Otherwise go to options and find it that way. You'll see that the gradient map gets applied to the whole canvas. For now we only want it to affect one of the images so let's make sure it's above the right layer and then turn it into a clipping mask by right clicking and selecting clipping mask. You'll then want to click on the gradient bar. Now there's a lot of pre-made maps inside Photoshop waiting for you to play with. Some people are happy to just use these, other people are downloading more off the internet and some people are experimenting and creating their own colour maps. Like I said at the start of the video, if you want to download my pack, it's in the description. It's got lots of colour grading maps and also of course the notorious trippy psychedelic one that you probably will want to use. Anyway, whether you have my pack or not, whether you have the deluxe pack, it doesn't really matter. Let's keep moving with the tutorial. So basically how the gradient map works is by replacing the dark and the light from any image with colours of your choice. So you can see that on the left here, the pink is currently replacing the dark, the blacks, right? And then the white is replacing the white, which is why it goes from pink to white. But we have the ability to adjust this. So we can click on the white and make it whatever color we want. And then it will use that color to be the lightest point of the image. You can then click anywhere below the gradient bar to add another color. And this is how you gradually build your gradient map. So for example, if we wanted to make the iridescent effect from Brockhamptons, you see they've actually left the gradient bar down the side. This makes it a lot easier for us. But basically, all we have to do is take the colors that they've used and put it into our gradient map so this is the image i'm going to use because the background's all dark so it should be easy to get this dark blue um, and we're going to open up a gradient map and we're just going to start mapping these colors so like before you want to clip the gradient map to the image that we want um, and then you're going to go to the cog wheel and then go down to spectrums and then when you're in the spectrum section you can use this top spectrum because it's the brightest rainbow and this kind of does half of the job for us and now it's just a matter of kind of tweaking it to get it like Brockhamptons. So the first thing you probably want to do is move the dark blue to the left and move the, the lighter blue a bit further this way. And that's already like very almost there. So now it's just a matter of shifting these around a little bit. So you can see it goes from dark blue to light blue to a green. So we'll move the green over this way and we'll move the pink up this way move the red a little bit further up have the pink around here and we need to have a white right at the end so we'll add the white um, and we'll move the pinks away from the white so that we start to have some of the white showing basically i think something like that is pretty similar now they have a few differences obviously the whites are hitting different parts of their their face for example whereas joey badass's face isn't lit very well in this image once you've got it how you like it, you can merge your gradient map with the image and then you could actually add some noise if you want to make it look like Brockhamptons. You can see there's a lot of noise. They've kind of made it look like it's a real camera taking the picture. So we're going to go for that effect as well. You go filter gallery and then go down to the grain section in texture. And then you want to play with the contrast and intensity until you've got it how you think you want it. So it's probably something like that. And then say you wanted to also have the gradient bar. Um, that's pretty easy to do. That would just be a matter of using the marquee tool to create the rectangle. And then I would use a really huge brush with um, your opacity turned all the way down so that you can add things in. So we'll just start taking the colors. So dark blue down the bottom, then the lighter blue, take the green. I'm literally just clicking Alt and then left clicking and it's selecting the colors for me. 
And then once you've got that, you want to add the same amount of noise as you did to the image to that little bar just by doing the same thing. In fact, I might even turn the intensity up a little bit so that it's more apparent. And there you go. That is how you would create Brockhampton's iridescent effect. I think this is a very cool effect. I can see this being used for so many designs, honestly. If you guys have followed this tutorial and made some of your own heat map artwork, then definitely come and share it in our Discord community. That's what the community is all about. We give each other feedback on our artwork and you can level up ranks within the Discord. It's quite a cool system. So if you are a designer or someone who just wants to be part of an art community, then definitely come say hello. Anyway, guys, that's probably going to be it for this video. I'm going to keep it nice and short. There isn't too much to explain with the gradient map tool. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know down in the comments. And if you guys think I should maybe go further with this style, or maybe teach you some other useful Photoshop tools like this, then just leave a comment and let me know and I'll be sure to do it. Thank you all so much for 100k. Like I said at the start of the video, I plan on making an update, maybe a giveaway, something like that real soon for you. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed and take care of yourselves. Peace out.